This is part 3 of SQL Server Interview Questions and Answers video series. In this video, we'll discuss how a recursive CTA actually works by looking at its execution line by line. In part 2 of this video series, we have written a recursive CTA to get the organization hierarchy based on the employee ID that is passed to the recursive CTA. After watching this video, a lot of you have asked me to record a video explaining how this recursive CTA actually works, hence this video. Uh, we'll be using the same examples that we used in part 2, so please watch part 2 before proceeding. So if you recollect from the previous video session, this is the employees table. Now when we execute the recursive CTA, passing in David's employee ID to the recursive CTA, this what is the output that's produced. So if you look at David's position within the organization, this is where he is in the hierarchy. So David reports to Tom, Tom reports to Steve, Steve reports to Ben, Ben doesn't have uh, a manager, he's the super boss. So when we pass David's employee ID to the recursive CTA, it produces this output. So here we have got employee name and the respective manager name. So for David, manager is Tom for Tom, Steve for Steve, Ben. Ben is our super boss, hence this text no boss is displayed. And to produce this output, this is the recursive CTE that we have written in part two of this video series. And notice that we are passing employee ID 7. Employee ID 7 is David's employee ID. Okay, um, so Let's understand how this recursive CTE is able to produce the output that we have seen on the previous slide. Now, the first thing that we have to notice is that recursive CTE has got two members. The first one is called the anchor member and the second one right here, it's called the recursive member. So the way this CTE actually executes is, you know, first the anchor parts get executed and obviously once this anchor part is executed it produces a result set so let's say it's r0 now that result set is passed as input to the recursive member and obviously this recursive member is going to generate another result set so let's call that result set you know maybe r1 now that result set will then be used as input again to the recursive member and it's going to produce result r2 and similarly R2 will be used as again the input for the recursive member and it's going to produce result R3. So it goes on until the output of the, this recursive member becomes null. So once the output has become null at that point all the result sets on all the result sets union all operator is applied and it is going to produce the final output. So let's actually look at that in execution line by line. So let's flip to SQL Server Management Studio. So first, let's look at the table. So select star from employees. This is the same table that you have seen on the slide. Okay, so, and here is our recursive CT that we have written in the previous uh, video series. And notice that we are passing in David's employee ID, that is employee ID 7. So we discussed that first the anchor part gets executed. So instead of using that variable, I'm going to hard code the value. So let's execute this anchor part. So we are going to get an output. So let's copy this output, uh, you know, along with the headers and then paste that within this Excel sheet. So we have employee ID, employee name, manager ID. Okay, so first the anchor part is executed and then, you know, obviously it has produced a result set. Let's call it R0. So that's the result set. And that result set will now be used as the input for this recursive member. Okay. So here, notice that we are joining. This is the employee CTE. Okay. So now the CTE contain this result set. So instead of this join, let's actually get rid of that and then use a where class here. Okay, so this employee CT at the moment it contains this result set and that is going to act as the input for this recursive member. So we are going to say employees.employee ID equals in employee CT what do we have? We have this result set and we want the manager ID column value and manager ID column value is 4 so let's copy that and paste it right here. So now this recursive member will be executed with 
you know r0 the output that we have got after executing anchor part okay as the input for the recursive member so let's execute that so we get this output so let's copy these uh, this row and then paste it right there okay now again this will be used as the input for the recursive member again so now the manager id is 3 so that gets passed down to the recursive member let's execute that so we get that output copy that and then let's paste that in the excel sheet and now manager id is 8 that gets passed down to the uh, recursive member and it gets executed again and we get this output now look at that manager id has become null and that gets passed you know null um, as the value for this query and obviously we don't get any output from the recursive member so that's when the recursion ends so once the recursion has ended um, union all operator is applied on all the result sets that are produced so far and we get this output okay but then if you look at this let's actually undo whatever we have done so far okay so now when we actually execute this CT so we are passing employee 87 so we get this output employee name manager name um, we are not getting this output so basically this is what is the CTE finally going to produce so basically this CTE right here that is the recursive CTE okay so this CTE is going to produce this output and we can actually prove that by commenting all these lines and then simply selecting everything from employee CTE so let's execute that part notice that the output that you see here and the output that we have within the Excel sheet are the same okay so this explains how the recursive CTE works and if you are wondering how did we get this output that's straightforward okay so once we have this employee CTE this query right here is joining the employee CTE with itself so that's a different concept altogether that's simple self join there just like how we do a self join on tables here we are doing a self join using the employee CTE okay but basically the idea here is to explain how a recursive CTE works and I hope you know this video has been clear in explaining you know how the recursive CTE actually works in case if you still have got questions please leave them as comments and then I'll try and answer them as soon as I can alright that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day